In this video, I will introduce how to use a matrix to solve for a system of linear equations, normally with three or more variables. First, let's quickly look at the definition of a matrix. A matrix is a group of real numbers organized in a rectangular array. Each horizontal line of the numbers in the matrix is a row. And each vertical line in the matrix is a column. If the number of rows in a matrix is M and the number of columns in the matrix is N and both M and N are positive integers, then the matrix is a M by M matrix and its order is also M by N. Every number in the matrix is called an entry and the subscript represents its position in the matrix. For example, for this entry A34, its subscript reads 34, which means that this entry belongs to row 3 and column 4. Let's look at this example. Previously, we learned how to solve this system of linear equations using the Gaussian elimination method. But did you notice that we were only manipulating the coefficients of the system and we were simply carrying the variables x, y, and z over and over every time we rewrite the system? So is that necessary? Why don't we just forget about the variables for now and only work on the coefficients? And hopefully, this way, our calculation will be more efficient. Therefore, we organize the coefficients and the constants in this 3 by 4 matrix. This is called the augmented matrix for our original system of equations. As you can see, each row represents one equation from the original system, and the first three columns represent the coefficients for the three variables x, y, and z in that order. And the last column represents the constants. This matrix is called an augmented matrix because it can be considered as the combination of two matrices a 3 by 3 square coefficient matrix that contains all the coefficients for the variables in the original system of the equations and a 3 by 1 column matrix that contains all the constants in the original system. Now we have transformed our original system of equations into this matrix. Don't forget this is still just a technique and our final goal is still to solve our system of equations. To do that, we are again going to apply row operations, similar to what we have learned before. So we need to transform this matrix into row echelon form or the reduced row echelon form. As I will explain later, if the matrix is transformed into the reduced row echelon form, we can read the solution to the system directly. Once again, row operations include switching two rows, multiplying any row with a non-zero constant, add the multiple of one row to another to replace it. Now let's see how it works. We start with this matrix. Based on our knowledge of row echelon form and from observation, we can see that row 1 is already in row echelon form. So what do we do next? If you recall from the Gaussian elimination method, we want to eliminate the x variable from equation 2 and 3, which means that here we want these two coefficients to be 0. And we're going to achieve that by adding the multiples of r1 to row 2 and 3. Therefore, we multiply r1 by negative 2, add it to row 2, and also we multiply r1 by 3 and add it to r3. And we get this new matrix. As you can see, these two coefficients are now 0, indicating that the x variable has been eliminated from equation 2 and 3. And for row 2, if we divide it by 9 or multiply it by 1 over 9, then we get this new form. And as you can see, row 2 is now in row echelon form as well. So next, we want this coefficient to be 0. And we're going to do that by adding multiples of our new row 2 to row 3. Therefore, we multiply row 2 by 7 and add it to R3. Almost there, if we take row 3 
divided by three or multiply it by one third, which is the same thing, then we achieve this form. As you can see, these three coefficients are all zero. And you notice this stair-like shape. And we have achieved the row echelon form. Now we have achieved the row echelon form. If you recall, we can now use the back substitution method to solve our system of equations. But we won't stop here. Now we're going to try to make these two coefficients zero by again applying the row operations. To do that, we're going to add r3 multiplied by negative 3 to r1, and also we're going to add r3 to r2 directly, and then we get this new matrix. As you can see, these two entries are now both 0. The next thing to do is to make this coefficient 0 by adding r2 multiplied by 2 to r1. Now, if you look at this matrix, it's very special because if you look at the square coefficient matrix, you will notice that only the main diagonal entries are all 1 and all the other entries are all 0. And this form is known as the reduced row echelon form. And why did we want to get to this reduced row echelon form? Just like we were able to create the matrix from the system of equations, now we can try to translate this matrix back into a system of equations. And what we get is simply x equals to 4, y equals to negative 3, and z equals to negative 2. As you can see, if you can transform your matrix into the reduced row echelon form, you are able to read the solution to your system of equations directly. So this method, by using the matrix, transforming the matrix into the reduced row echelon form, and read the solution directly. This is known as the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Let's look at this example. We're going to solve this linear system with four equations and four variables, again, using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. So first thing to do is to organize all the coefficients and constants into its augmented matrix. This is a four by five matrix. There are four rows. Each row corresponds to one of the equations in the original system, and the first four columns represent the coefficients for the variables x, y, z, and w, respectively, in that order. As you can see, if in any of the original equations a variable is missing, then a zero is used as the entry to fill up the space. Again, this augmented matrix is made up of two matrices, a 4 by 4 square coefficient matrix, and a 4 by 1 column constant matrix. So we start with this matrix. Once again, our approach is to first transform it into the row echelon form, and then transform it into the reduced row echelon form. From observation, we realize that if we switch row 1 and 3, and if we also switch row 2 and 4, then we get this new matrix. As you can see, row 1 and 2 are now in row echelon form already. Next thing to do is to make these two coefficients 0. So we're going to add row 1 multiplied by negative 2 to row 3, and we're going to add row 1 multiplied by negative 2 again to row 4, and we get this new matrix. Following the previous step, now we want to make these two coefficients 0 using row 2 to achieve that. So we multiply row 2 by negative 3 and add it to row 3, and we multiply row 2 by negative 7 and add it to row 4, and then we get this new matrix. And now we want to make this coefficient 0 using row 3 to achieve that. So we multiply row 3 by negative 3 and add it to row 4. Now we get this new matrix. 
if we look at row 4 in this new matrix, if we divide it by negative 18 or multiply it by negative 1 over 18, same thing, then we get this new matrix. As you can see, all these coefficients are all zero, and this is the row echelon form. But we won't stop here. We want to achieve the reduced row echelon form. So first thing we do is to make these coefficients zero using row four. So we multiply row four by two, three, and a negative 14, respectively, and add those multiples to row one, two, and three, respectively and make those coefficients zero. Then we want to make these two coefficients zero using row three. So we multiply row three by negative one, add it to row one, and then add row three to row two directly, making those two coefficients zero. And lastly, we want to make this coefficient zero using row two. So we multiply row two by two, add it to row one, and now, if you look at this special format of this matrix, for this square coefficient matrix, as you can see, only the main diagonal entries are 1, all the other entries are all 0. And this is the reduced row echelon form. And as I explained earlier, now if you look at this last column, that is your solution to the system of equations. It translates to x equals to negative 3, y equals to 1, z equals to negative 2, and w equals to negative 1. And this problem now is solved using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method.